Hey guys, how's it going? So I have kind of a soft spot for companies that try to do things just a little bit differently and bring something different to the market. So when Andar got in touch with me about reviewing this Apollo wallet that they offer, I was a little bit hesitant at first. I mean, the wallet's kind of just been overdone to the point of being overdone. But when I started looking at the features, I saw a couple little things that really would change the way I use a wallet for the better. So I wanted to go ahead and take a look and that's what we're gonna do right here. So here's the Apollo wallet. Let's get into the specs and then we'll get into what I actually think of this wallet and why it has changed some of the ways I use a wallet for me. So let's get started. All right guys, so let's run through the specs. There are five card slots that hold up to 10 cards. There is one pocket on the outside that has an elastic pull tab for cards with quick, easy access. There's a money clip, there's an ID pocket. It's made of full grain, crazy horse vintage leather. They have five different colors and then they also have a cork version, which is water and stain resistant. It measures out to four and one eighths inches long, two and seven eighths inches wide, and three eighths inches high. It is RFID protected and it has a one year warranty. And the one we're looking at right here is actually their dark brown leather material. Now, really what kind of interested me about this wallet versus some of their others in the lineup is that they really tried to incorporate different features that they have on other wallets all into this one. So we get a nice rounded look at what it is like to have some of the features of an Andar wallet. Now, if you look at the wallet, this is the dark brown one. The leather has a really nice kind of soft touch to it, but it doesn't scratch too easily, which means it's going to weather really nicely and give you that really nice aged look out of a leather wallet. I think they call it Pantina is the official word for it. But I did find when I was kind of throwing it around the car and having it in my pocket and other areas next to phones and that kind of stuff, like your nails don't scratch it super easily, but it is starting to lighten around the folded edges and some on the top and sides, which I find to be really cool. It's part of the reason I really like, like kind of custom leather goods is because you get that high quality leather that will age well and look even better over time and more personal to you. So as far as branding on this wallet goes, it's really nice and subdued. They have one little logo that's right on the front of the wallet and they have another one that's behind your ID card. So the only logo that you actually see on this wallet while using it is this front little small one. So let me start off by saying I am really partial to money clip type designs instead of having a traditional pocket for your cash or receipts. Even when I had wallets that had that pocket, I would fold my money in half and just stick it in the center. For some reason, I could just never get a wallet to really fold correctly if you use that big money slot. So to have this integrated clip that is in the center of the wallet, is a really nice plus for me. Now, I don't carry cash all that often, but what I do have a lot of is receipts while I'm traveling. So what this allows me to do is secure those lighter receipts in the center until I'm able to file them away without having to worry about bulking up the wallet or losing them as they fall out. So I really like that money clip part of the design. So we'll kind of try to run through this wallet pocket wise without giving away any of my credit card <laughs> numbers in this video. But in the outside, you do get this quick and easy access one. This is where I put my most used card I don't stack anything else in here. This is the one I use for almost every day if I'm out purchasing something while I'm out on the street. So having it right here on the outside without having to open my wallet up is nice and it's secure enough to where I'm not worried about it falling out. When you go to the inside, you have two more pockets. I use those for my you know, less used cards, stuff like Costco, my backup credit card, anything that I'm not going to be grabbing on a daily basis because the opening slot here is just a little bit thin. So getting them in and out is not as easy. So these are not my quick access cards. They just kind of stay put unless I really need them. Then of course you have the ID card portion right here. It is a nice window that allows people to see your ID if you need to get carded for anything. Keep in mind the bezels are a little bit thick though. So make sure you center it really well or you could sometimes overdo like part of the date of your birthday or something like that. Another thing to keep in mind is that this pocket opens up towards the money clip. So if you need to get your ID in and out a lot, this might not be a good place for it because you'd have to actually take the cash out or anything else you had in there. It's also harder to get it out because you have to go up against that money clip. Personally, I don't have to take my ID out all that often, so it stays put and most grocery stores or liquor stores or anything else don't make you take your ID all the way out anymore. So that brings us to this outside pocket that has the elastic pull tab. Now, what this is really meant for is just more, two or three more quick and easy access cards so that you can just pull the tab and they're ready to go. That is not actually what I use this for and that's why I found this wallet so interesting for my use case. What this pocket is actually perfect for is business cards. You pull the tab, business cards pop out and they're there and secure. And not only that, they're safe. This is a very secure pocket in the wallet. So what ends up happening is, is you keep your business cards really flat and they don't get bent like they would in some other wallets. 
So when I'm at a client meeting or somewhere else, I'm able to pull out business cards very easy and efficiently and have them not all bent up and looking mangly as I hang, hand them to someone. It also keeps me from having to go into my briefcase or somewhere else. It's just right there. I put about four or five of them in there. So I have quick, easy access to them. And it really turned out to be a good feature of this wallet for my use case because it keeps those business cards really nice, flat and clean looking. So overall, I would call this kind of a mid-sized wallet versus a small wallet. It is very slim. It starts off at about 10 millimeters in thickness. Once I loaded it up with everything that I had, including the business cards, it topped out at about 17 millimeters. So yes, still a very slim wallet. Um, it is a little bit wider and taller than say like the Ridge wallet that I've been carrying around recently. But there were some shortcomings to the Ridge wallet where I wasn't able to carry business cards and some other items. So having the additional ability to do that has made this my daily driver now. It also is very soft and easy to front pocket carry or rear pocket carry. So you have both options. It's not too big to be a front pocket wallet. The pricing is also really reasonable at $55. I find that to be about the mid range when it comes to slim leather wallets. You can get into more expensive materials like I did with my Ridge and get over a hundred. So this $55 range seems to be about the sweet spot. I will say this is the most expensive wallet from Andar. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit cheaper, they do have several of those options as well that you can check out in the link below. So when Andar sent over the wallet, they also sent me one of their Apple watch bands and I got the dark brown to actually match the wallet. So let's go over the specs of that really quick as well. It's full grain oil wax leather. It's designed to be compatible with Apple watch series one, two, three, four, and five. They do have options for both the 38 40 millimeter and the 42 44 millimeter size Apple watches. It's stainless steel hardware. One size fits most wrists ranging from 160 millimeters to 210 millimeters and it is $40 for the Apple watch band. So a couple of thoughts on the watch band itself. One, if you are getting a silver version, it should match pretty perfectly to your silver Apple watch. I have the space gray version. So with the black hardware, it doesn't perfectly match the space gray. It's not really a big nitpick for me. You don't notice it wearing it around, but if you're one of those people that like everything to match perfectly, just keep that in mind. Uh, I will say though, the clips for the Apple watch are very high quality in this case. I have gotten some aftermarket watch bands where the clips didn't fit in really well with the watch and you get a lot of jiggling. These have a really good tight fit because as far as I know, Apple is still not licensing out these clips and you have to get them from a third party. And some of those third party production quality measures aren't really in line with the Apple watch. So if you buy this, do know these fit like an Apple Watch OEM one. Just like with the wallet, the leather quality is really good, except just keep in mind, and this is not just for this leather watch band, it's for any of them. There is a break-in period with these. When you take them out of the package, you'll notice that the leather's pretty stiff. So be prepared that first week to be kind of moving it around or hearing the leather a little bit. It's because it needs to kind of conform to your wrist and actually start being bendy and it's a little bit softer especially for people like me with thinner wrists, it really needs to bend around a little bit more. So just be prepared for that break-in period. It really isn't that big a deal, but it's not like taking one of, say like the silicone bands and just putting it on right away and everything's good. This will take about a week or two to get kind of broken in and really comfortable. So overall for $40, this is actually a really high quality watch band, especially when you consider the outrageous pricing Apple wants for theirs. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this kind of weathers over time, but for now it's a really professional look that I can go in for meetings and stuff. And it's not like I'm wearing my athletic watch band everywhere I go. So if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, if you have any experience with Andar wallets or watch bands or anything other other products, please let me know. I'd like to know what you think down in the comments. If you wanna see more reviews like this in the future, please consider subscribing and giving this video a thumbs up. And until then, on to the next one. Thanks guys, see you.